Okay, so we're actually going to get into it with Maple doing Euler's method. In this particular video, we're going to be taking a look at a couple of examples and making sense of what does Maple's output tell us about Euler's method. So the example that we want to try to make sense of is we have a differential equation. Looks like it's in terms of y and t, that independent variable t. And we have an initial condition. And it asks us to compute y of 0.2. Now we know y of 0 is 1, but what about y of 0.2? Well, just looking at this thing, this is not separable. So we'd have to have Maple calculate it for us and find some way to do it. And we're going to do this with a step size of 0.1. We're going to use Euler's method. Now, a step size of 0.1 means we start at a t value of 0, we take one step and get to 0.1, we take two steps and we get to 0.2. So this is going to be a, a pretty quick problem, right? So filling in our table here, we're going to start off with k values, and remember from the previous video, the k values come from this uh, way of writing the Euler's method. And the k value just tells us it's the index, right? It says, oh, you want to know where you are for the zeroth step, the first step, and the second, and the third, and the fourth. And so starting with k equals zero for the zeroth step, that's kind of where we start at to begin with, t sub zero, our initial condition is t equals zero, and y sub zero, our initial condition, is one. And we can tell that by looking at our IC right here. The other stuff on that row, we're going to have to do a little bit of calculation. So this is saying, what's the slope? What's the function, the derivative value at our location right here? So if I plug in this guy right here, what it's really asking me to calculate is the slope value at this particular point location. So 0 squared minus 1 squared is just negative 1. So what is the step size times the slope value? Well, the step size right here we said was is 0.1. So this is going to be our h. And so what is h times negative 1? Well, it's just negative 0 0.1. So we got our first row all set. The second row, we can actually do these calculations and see how it turns out. So the after one step, our new location, t1, we're going to get by taking our previous location and add our step size. So this is 0 0.1. And again, all I'm doing is I'm following the script of this little program right down here. And the new y-coordinate, it's my old y-coordinate plus h times my, sl um, times my slope, my step size times my slope. So it's 1 plus negative 0.1. So that's just 0 0.9. So, so far, so good. And by the way, this is the change in the y-coordinate. That's what that column tells me. So now I have to figure out these two because I'm going to take one more step. So what's the slope value at my new point right here? Well, the equation says take t, square it. So this guy squared is 0.01 minus the y-coordinate squared. 0.9 squared is 0.81. So 0.81, so 0 0.01 minus 0 0.81 is just negative 0.8. And similarly, if I multiply that by my step size, I'm left with negative 0.08. Right, because step size is positive and it stays a negative number. So I've calculated this, and that's how I'm going to figure out what to do for my last step right here. So after two steps, my t coordinate is now 0 0.2. I've taken two steps of step size 0.1. Right. So you can see this as going up by h. And this is going up. This is changing by h times f of t sub k, y sub k. 
And so this one, we don't actually have to calculate these guys because we're going to stop at this right here. This is our prediction. And after a little bit of arithmetic, you plug in this value. Your previous y coordinate plus this thing gives you y sub 2 equals 0 0.82. So that means we're predicting that our solution curve that passes through this point right here, the solution curve for this differential equation that passes through this point is going to have a y value of 0.82 when the t value is 0.2. We predict y of 0 0.2 is approximately 0.82. But how accurate is our prediction? How good is that? How correct is our estimate? Well, we don't really have a real answer to compare it to. So the answer is, I don't know. I like to draw this as the mathematical symbol for, I don't know, which looks something like this. Who knows? I don't know. We don't have a real answer to compare it to. So we could always ask Maple. We could try it in Maple. So I'm going to hop over and let's take a look at what happens when we do a, a desolve on this. So if I do desolve, and I'm interested in solving my differential equation, I know because it's an initial condition problem, I'm going to do put it in brackets here. Diff y of t, comma t. And if I remember correctly, it was t squared minus y of t squared. And our initial condition was y of 0 equals 1, right? And so by telling Maple I want the solution, this is going to give me the equation of my solution curve. And I should just be able to evaluate it. And uh, holy cow. Holy cow, look at that. Oh my goodness, it's got somebody's name in it. And you know what that means. <laughs> Back away slowly whenever there's somebody's name appearing in this. But look at that. Y of t equals, looks like it behaves this way. Let me get rid of this stuff. Whenever t is less than 0, it behaves this way. It behaves like 1 whenever t is equal to 0. And it behaves like all this stuff when t is greater than 0. So, holy crap, this is a complicated solution. There's no way we could figure out what this is. I mean, there's a gamma function. There's a Bessel function in here. Good Lord. So we clearly don't have the chops to figure out what the heck is going on there. But we can still use Euler's method. So I'm going to add a little note down here and say, even though we can't come up with a an exact answer, we use Euler's method to approximate. And so now what we're going to do is figure out what um, um, Euler's method looks like in Maple. And so for this, we're going to type in some code. And so the first thing that we need is we're going to use so a new library. We're going to use with student and then brackets, numerical analysis. And you'll see it's auto filling it in. All one word, numerical analysis, capital N, capital A, close brackets. And if I just hit this without the colon, you'll see there's a whole bunch of stuff that numerical analysis does. And a lot of this stuff is, you know, mm, but you'll see if you kind of pay attention, you'll see Euler. And by the way, there's also Euler Tutor, which you can use to solve things. It'll walk you through step by step, but we're, we're just going to jump right into it. So I'm going to use, I'm going to open up this new library, and we're going to type in the code. The code is as follows, capital E-U-L-E-R, Euler. And then inside the parentheses, the first thing we're going to type in is our differential equation. So I'm going to type it in, I'll use the the palette and kind of cheat a little bit. dy dt of y of t equals t squared minus 
y of t squared. That's our differential equation. The second thing that we type in is our initial condition. And you'll notice we didn't have to type in curly brackets in front of this because Euler expects an initial condition. So y of 0 equals 1. That's our initial condition. The very next thing is we tell it where we want to end up. So for this particular problem that we just got done doing, we wanted to end up when t was equal to 0 0.2. So we want to predict what's our solution value when t equals 0 0.2. The next thing is we tell it how many steps to take. And we do that by saying num steps. Num steps tells it how many steps to take. And for our purposes, we did this with two steps, right? We went from 0 to 0 0.1 and from 0 0.1 to 0 0.2. And then last but not least, we're going to tell it to output the answer Actually, you know what, With, before I do that, let's just see what happens. If I just tell it num steps 2, Maple says 0.82, which is exactly what we got as our predicted answer. But one of the nice things about Maple is with this Euler, you can actually, this, this code, I'm just going to copy and paste, you can tell it to do not just tell me what the answer is, tell me what the approximation is, but I can actually tell it to do this and give me an output that's more than just the answer. Give me the output as information. Output as information creates a table that's pretty handy. And you'll notice the table looks like t values, so 0 to 0 0.1 to 0 0.2. Maple's numeric solution, which by the way is, is the quote unquote correct answer. And then Euler's method, the method that we're using right here, and then it also calculates the error, like how far off is the Euler's method solution from the quote unquote right answer. So the right answer has a value of 0.8358. That is the correct answer for what is y of 0.2. What is y when t equals 0.2? We approximate it with two steps as 0.82, which is pretty darn close. If you want to think of it this way, it's like a 1.5 or 1.6% error. That's pretty good. That's not so bad, but it's not perfect. So what could we do to make this more accurate? How could I change my code? I'm just going to go up here and copy this. How could I change it and make it more accurate? I want to do better than 0.82. I want to get closer to the right answer. And so if you're kind of following along, you realize I can't really change the differential equation. I can't change the initial condition. I can't change where I want it to approximate. That's the place that I want it to evaluate. But what I can change is num steps. So let's say instead of two steps, I take 10 steps. And let's see what that looks like. Notice Maples gives me the first what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine steps, but then it kind of peters out and it says, eh, there's more here than I can fit. But you'll notice if I whoops, if I click on this thing, you can force it to see if I can can't remember where the answer is here. So if you're you go off to the side and get that context panel off here, one of the things that you can click on is show all. And so if you kind of selected your uh, table that it spit out, whoops, but it didn't give you the full view, you can say show all, and it will actually fill in all the rows of the table. So it's basically telling Maple, no, seriously, I want to see all 10 outputs. So take a look. Euler's solution now, after 20 steps, or excuse me, 10 steps, is 0.8329, which is really, really good compared to what we had before. It's much better. And so you might be thinking, hey, well, why stop there? Why not just go for broke and say, let's make 100 steps? The problem with that is, of course, showing all is not so easy to do when you have, oops, let me delete this. Showing all is not so easy to do when you have 100 rows, well, 102 with the titles. So I, I don't even know what it's going to tell me if I say show all. Will it show all? Oh my goodness, it did. Look at that. All 102 rows. Good Lord. What a pain in the tuchus. But after 102 rows, 100 steps, we got to 
0.8355, which is really close to the correct answer of 0.8358. Now, just a reminder, we didn't have to tell it to give us an output of information. Let me back this up and instead say, what if I did just no specific output? Just tell me what's your approximation. Maple says, no problem. I'll give you the answer. It's 0.8355, right? We didn't need all this stuff here. Do that. Boop. 0.8355. And if I do a thousand steps, I'm literally telling it to go 10 times more steps. Let's see what Maple says. Hey, look at that which is about as accurate as I can expect to get. Now, if I wanted to, I could ask it to give me more decimal places. Um, and I think if I do, boy, I'm trying to remember on this one. I think it's, the command is digits, digits equals, and it's basically the number of significant figures. So if I do like eight digits, you'll see what it spits out. 0.8357, five six five zero so that gives me my eight significant figures and by the way maple can do more if i say hey i'd, I'd really like to have 12 digits maple thinks about it and it goes okay i can calculate that out there but notice remember we said that the correct answer was 0.8358 this is not quite there but this is also rounded to four four decimal places so we already have a sense that Maple with this new Euler command can approximate things, even when the solution is something horribly ugly. Ugh. And we wouldn't want to do that, right? So let's switch back to the notes and take a look at, um, and I just want to write down the, the Maple coding on this. I just want to make sure that we've got this. In general, using Maple, the code is going to look like this. You have to first load with capital S student and then square bracket numerical capital N capital A analysis. You have to load that library or else you're not going to be able to do this. And then you're going to be using the uh, command is Euler. So let me write this in here and mm, I don't know what color. I'll just write it in light purple, I guess. Actually, no, I'll write it in brown so that it shows up a little bit better. The code is Euler with a capital E and then parentheses. And then I'm going to use these brackets here to denote the first thing that we're going to type in is whatever our differential equation is, comma, whatever our initial condition is, comma, where we want to go, that's our prediction, comma, num steps, however many steps you want to take. And then of course the last one was the output. And output equals information is not required, but it's nice to be able to see kind of all that information right, in, one, in one table. You don't have to have the uh, output information, so I'm going to kind of tag this as optional. But if you don't have it, it's just going to spit out what the answer is. So that gives us the code that we need to do this on Maple, which is pretty impressive. That means that we can approximate a solution even when a real answer is not handy to compare. So we're going to stop the video here and then we're going to talk a little bit about what these predictions do for us and then we'll see one more example together here.